super reservoir of water discovered on the moon, enough for tens of thousands of years. Can you believe it? Humanities. Life extending water. In space is hidden on the moon, a celestial body we've called barren for decades. And it's enough to sustain all of humanity in space for tens of thousands of years. This isn't a science fiction speech by Elon Musk. It's a solid fact presented to the world by China's Chang'e probe. Billions of tons of water ice are dormant in the moon's permanently shadowed regions, PSRs, at the poles, enough to power humanity's every dream of venturing into the solar system. Some might ask, how do we know there's water on the moon, 380,000 kilometers away? The principle is similar to a hospital's CT scan. The microwave radiometer carried by the Chang'e probe essentially performed a full, deep scan of the moon. Water ice and dry lunar soil have completely different, reflective temperaments, towards microwaves. Water ice slows the microwave signal, much like a wet cloth is heavier than a dry one. By capturing this signal difference, we can precisely calculate where the water is and how much there is, making this method 100 times more accurate than the violent detection method the U.S. used when they crashed a rocket into the moon. What's even more revolutionary is that this water is not merely a simple supply that astronauts can just turn on and drink. It is the energy code that supports human space civilization and the hard currency that rewrites the rules of the space economy. You might not realize it, but transporting things in space is more expensive than transporting gold. During the U.S. space shuttle era, sending one kilogram of material to low Earth orbit, LEO, cost $20,000, and sending it to the moon skyrocketed to $300,000. Water, unfortunately, is the most space-consuming necessity in space missions. Every sip of water astronauts drank and every drop of recycled water they used was smashed with money to be shipped from Earth. Now, the discovery of lunar water ice has cut this money-burning chain right in half. Even more incredible is water's transformation magic through electrolysis. This unassuming dollar backslash text H underscore two backslash text O dollar can be split directly into liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, which are widely recognized as the fuel ceiling in aerospace. Liquid oxygen is the astronauts. Air in a can. The oxygen electrolyzed from 10 liters of water is enough for one astronaut to breathe for a whole day. Moreover, the rocket propellant combining liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen completely surpasses the energy density of the commonly used UDMH fuel, achieving an impulse of over 450 seconds. Simply put, for the same weight of fuel, it allows the rocket to fly further and carry heavier loads. NASA estimated that propellants made from one ton of lunar water could reduce the launch cost of a Mars probe from $120 million to $12 million a direct 90% cut in expenditure. This is not mere theoretical data. SpaceX's Starship rocket was designed with a lunar fuel refueling port. Reserved, Elon Musk long planned to use lunar water ice as the supply for a space gas station. The European Space Agency, ESA, was even more direct, unveiling the concept map of a lunar water ice electrolysis plant. Last year, planning to build a modular device covering less than 100 square meters that could process one ton of water ice daily, sufficient to support the fuel needs of a small Mars mission. Previously, the cost of transporting one liter of water from Earth to the moon was equivalent to three liters of gold, forcing astronauts to be extremely careful even when washing their hands. Now, the permanent shadow pits on the moon are natural reservoirs, like installing a free tap in space. The cost of humanity's journey to Mars has instantly dropped from an exorbitant plane ticket to an affordable high-speed rail ticket. This is not just a discovery of water. It's giving wings to humanity's space dreams. Next, let's explore why this lunar reservoir has caused widespread sleeplessness in the European and American space communities and why China's discovery is a boon for all of humanity in space. After reading this, you'll understand that the moon is no longer just a desolate pile of rocks but the first gas station on our path to the universe. First, let's look at the U.S., a major space power that has been calling for a return to the moon. 
for over a decade and is now caught off guard by China's discovery. In 2009, the U.S. crashed its lacrosse probe into the moon's south pole and found traces of 100 kilograms of water in the dust. At the time, NASA excitedly announced, The moon has water, but the reserves calculated by China's Chang'e are billions of times that number. More painfully, the U.S. then calculated that the water ice content was less than 0.1% of the lunar soil, deeming the mining cost higher than gold and shelved the discovery. Now, the U.S. is anxious. Their Artemis program was initially scheduled for a crewed moon landing in 2025, but the development of the lander by SpaceX fell behind schedule. NASA had to quickly reopen the bidding, bringing in companies like Blue Origin for an emergency rescue. It's important to remember that the U.S. plans to establish a permanent base on the moon, and water is what they need most. According to their calculations, one astronaut consumes 4 liters of water daily, meaning a 10-person base would require 14 tons of water annually, costing up to $120 million to transport. China's discovery of billions of tons of water ice is equivalent to granting an unlimited water card to this project. No wonder NASA has frequently been calling for data sharing with China recently. Behind this lies a harsh truth. Space exploration is never about who discovers it first wins, but who can utilize it precisely is the best. The U.S.'s discovery and subsequent abandonment fundamentally reflects a short-sighted space strategy, focusing only on immediate technical difficulties while ignoring the long-term value of space resources. China's breakthrough confirms that precise detection is the hard currency. Chang'e's microwave remote sensing technology not only clarified the moon's water situation but also provided the global space community with a new idea for low-cost utilization of space resources. Space is not the backyard of any single country, and lunar water ice is not anyone's private property. Instead of rushing to build a base, the U.S. should abandon its hegemonic mindset sooner and work with China to establish rules for lunar resource sharing. This is the responsible attitude toward human space exploration. Next, let's look at Europe, the former pioneer of lunar exploration, who can only gaze with longing at the lunar water ice now. In 2003, Europe launched the Smart One probe, three years earlier than China's Chang'e 1. They found signals suspected of being water ice in the moon's poles through spectral analysis, but due to insufficient detection accuracy, they never dared to draw a conclusion, only vaguely stating that water-bearing minerals might exist. It was not until China's Chang'e 5 directly measured water in the lunar soil in 2020 that ESA was filled with regret, publishing an article on their official website calling it a game-changing discovery. Europe's regret is not an isolated case. Their space program has been stalled by fragmentation. Germany is responsible for the probe's camera lens, France handles data processing, and Italy makes the lander support structure. Each country has its unique skills, but they fail to work together effectively. Even more interesting is that Europe is now actively seeking cooperation. In 2024, ESA signed an agreement with China to carry their rover on Chang'e 7, essentially wanting to hitch a ride with China to search for water on the moon. Considering that Europe was previously tied to the US, their shift to cooperation with China demonstrates who holds the core technology for lunar exploration and thus the right to speak. China's attitude is very open. The lunar water ice is enough for all humanity for tens of thousands of years, and one more partner means one more force for exploration. Let's discuss the gold value of lunar water ice. The reserves alone are shocking, but the economic calculation is even more astonishing. Sending one cubic meter of water from Earth to Elio costs up to one million pounds, and sending it to the moon would cost more than ten times that. Conversely, the value of producing one ton of water on the moon is conservatively estimated at 8.7 million pounds, and this market is projected to reach 179 billion pounds in the next 30 years. More importantly, rocket fuel made from water ice can increase the payload efficiency of spacecraft by three times. Previously, a large portion of a rocket's fuel launched from Earth was used to carry 
water and fuel for the journey. Now, refueling on the moon is like a plane not having to fly transatlantic routes with a full tank of fuel but having an air refueler mid-flight. The value of lunar water ice has already surpassed the scope of drinking water. It is the crucial springboard for humanity to transform from an Earth species into a space species. China's exploration results not only shattered the old notion that the moon is dry, but also overturned the pessimistic view that space resources are unusable. What is most encouraging is that China's discovery is breaking the hegemonic logic of space exploration. Previously, the U.S.'s Artemis program explicitly stated a preference for cooperation with allies, excluding China. Now, China has proven with its capability that we can obtain the treasure map of the moon without the U.S.'s entry ticket. Crucially, China has never claimed that the lunar water ice is ours. Instead, it publicly released the Chang'e detection data to the United Nations, inviting scientists from all countries to study it together. This attitude of open sharing forms a sharp contrast with the U.S.'s exclusive cooperation. The ultimate significance of space exploration is not who is better, but how far humanity can go. China is using the Chang'e exploration results to tell the world that there should be no cold war mentality or technological barriers in the aerospace field. The U.S.'s exclusive plans are becoming increasingly difficult to execute, and Europe's turn to cooperation is the best proof. Lunar water ice is the space lifeline for all humanity, not the spoils of war for any single country. China's open attitude not only demonstrates its responsibility as a major power but also sets an example for global space cooperation. The future of space should be about everyone flying together, not no one yielding to anyone.